welcome to my stay at home workout. Six days a week during the quarantine, I'm doing uh, short, simple, minimal equipment workouts uh, that I'm inviting you all to join in on. So if you're tuning in on Instagram, thanks for joining in. If you're watching this on YouTube later, please like and subscribe for more. So this is day one of six this week, meaning I'm going to focus on squat pattern. But before I get into that, I'm going to do a little bit of core bracing. And I'm going to show you and explain what I'm doing so you can follow along if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to do my sort of standard uh, core warm up, or at least my favorite, which I call the plank circuit. So it's going to consist of side planks and just classic forearm planks. We are going to be on our forearms, so you might want a mat for this one. Okay? So for the side plank, side plank is going to be from the elbow. I'll show you from this side first. The uh, upper arm is going to be straight up and down, meaning that shoulder is going to be stacked directly over top of that elbow. I'm going to bridge up at the hips and keep a straight line from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. You can do this a couple different ways. You can do this with strided feet, which is a little bit easier. That means the top leg is forward, easier to balance. Or you can do it with stacked feet, a little bit more of a balance challenge. That's up to you. I'm going to do stacked feet today. So I'm bridging up at the hips and I'm just holding nice and tight here, straight line. I want to squeeze this elbow into my side to keep the lat nice and tight. That is going to help uh, keep this uh, proper form here. Going for 20 seconds, already more than halfway there. From here, I'm going to roll right into a classic forearm plank. So that's going to look like this. I'm up in my forearms, I'm not hanging out of my shoulders, I got my shoulder blades protracted forward like so, and I want to be nice and flat in the back, so don't want the butt too high, don't want to let the midsection sag, I want to stay nice and tight. Halfway there. Don't let the head droop. From here, I'm going to roll into side plank on the other side. So once again, that's going to be from the elbow. I'm doing feet stacked, straight line from the bottom of my heels to the top of my head. I'm squeezing this elbow in here, making sure this lat is nice and tight. Watching for rib cage flare. I don't want my ribs uh, sort of sticking out because that means I'm probably arching in the lower back and therefore I'm not a straight line. From here, I'm going to relax. A little rest before we move into round two of that. And after that, get right into the main resistance work for the day, which is going to start with some uh, fun squat uh, variation. Okay. So from the elbow side plank again, once again, you can do strided feet, or you can try stack feet if you did stride it last time. Okay, bridging up. Hold it for 20 seconds here. Just trying to keep as still as possible. Sometimes it helps to point the toes like I'm doing right now. Kind of flexing the toes upward. Helps to keep tightness in the legs, I find. A few more seconds here. And let's roll into the classic forearm plank. Five more seconds here, and 20 seconds in side plank on this side. Maintain that straight line, stay tight, almost there, five more seconds. and relax. Alright, so before I get into the uh, four big exercises today, I'm just going to show you what equipment I'm working with. So hopefully you have something similar for my weight. I just have a 10 pound ball, 10 pound ball, excuse me. So if you've got a dumbbell or a kettlebell or even like a bag of flour or something, I don't know, it all works. Okay, and I also have a little resistance band here. It's about half inch in width. That's basically what I'm working with, except I've also got a couple of very small cans of tuna. I don't even like tuna, but the point is they're just super light weights, like less than a pound. So if you have like those little bullet weights that are a pound, or even if you have a couple of nice light canned goods about 
equal in size. Uh, you can grab those for these, and I'll show you what we're going to be doing with those uh, later on, okay? So, first things first, our squat pattern today is going to be split squats. So, split squats are going to be uh, sort of a one leg dominant exercise. Not truly a one limbed exercise, uh, but definitely one leg taking on uh, more of your weight than the other. This is gonna be for 10 reps, but it's actually gonna end up being 20 because we're gonna be doing 10 with each leg. So the split squat, first gonna hold that weight goblet style, nice and close to the chest like so, elbows in, okay? I'm gonna step forward with one leg, step back with the other. You see I'm sort of up on my big toe on that back leg. From here, I'm gonna dip down and then drive through that front heel but I'm also clamping down with the big toe and the little toe on the front foot for balance. I'm more or less straight up and down. I got a nice tight core. My spine is neutral. I can tap that knee to the ground, but I'm not resting on my back knee. Most of my weight's on the front foot. Got three more here. Wanna make sure my front knee isn't tracking in front of my front foot. Don't want the knee to go over the toes. If you look down, you can usually see uh, the situation there. Okay, same thing on this side. One side usually ends up being harder than the other for most people. This is the trickier side for me. So it's super important to clamp down with the big toe and little toe on the front foot here for that added balance. Three more. All right, I'm gonna keep things going pretty quickly here. I like to work my cardio in by minimizing rest periods. So I'm gonna switch into an upper body push. I'm gonna do a banded floor press today. So if you have a band, you can, or even you can do this with just dumbbells and you'll see how, it's pretty simple. But basically I'm gonna loop my thumbs through the band here, going around the back, sort of around the lats, underneath the shoulder blades there, and then I'm gonna tuck it under my elbows. From here, I'm gonna lie on my back, knees bent to help my back stick to the ground because I don't want to be doing this and have my lower back ribs off the ground. I want them down flat. My upper arm about a 45 degree angle to my torso. So I'm not here and I'm not right in about halfway. And from here I'm basically doing a bench press but with a band from the floor and I'm just pressing up to the point where my elbows lock out. So that's two, three, four. My shoulder blades are still back against the ground. That's five. That's six, just going to elbow lockout. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's it there. Going right on into a little bit of a hinge movement today, which is gonna be glute bridges or hip bridges, whatever you wanna call them. I've got a little uh, stable uh, surface here. So if you've got a bed or a couch pushed up against the wall like me or a bench, anything like that's gonna work. My shoulder blades are tucked uh, just against the edge of this couch here. So they kind of, the couch is basically just beneath my shoulder blades. I've got this uh, weight nice and comfortably in my lap here. And I'm going to be pushing through the heels and bridging up at the hips. You'll see what I mean by that. But I'm actually going to do one leg bridges. So you can do two legs if you want. I'm just going to get one leg sort of out of the equation there, just have it floating up. And from here, I'm driving through the heel, bridging up, little squeeze of the glutes at the top. Whole time, I'm keeping my eyes down on my lap. I'm not looking behind me, because if I look behind me, I could bridge up too far and uh, get my lower back into it, which isn't the point. I want this to be all about the hips and the glutes. Three more here. Switching legs, same thing on the other side. It's a pretty controlled range of motion. It's not super high. You can dip super low if you like, that's cool. But if you go too high, once again, probably get some arching that you're not looking for. Five more. Keep driving through that heel. Little squeeze at the top. And relax. The last of the four is, uh, gonna be sort of an upper body pull variation but super light it's almost a rehabilitative exercise but it's really great for strengthening the scapular muscles and because it's going to involve spreading the arms back and pulling like this it's kind of the opposite of what we're doing all day if you find yourself like sitting typing uh, watching stuff you know 
this is kind of a nice antidote to that. So basically what I'm going to do here, I'll show you from the side. I'm going to keep my knees nice and soft. And I'm just going to bend right over, basically horizontal. My shoulders are back. I've got these two little cans in my hands here, okay? I'll show you from the front now. I want to do like a thumbs out kind of uh, hold here. And the point of that is when I twist my hands out, you see when you rotate your arms outward like that, you can feel your lats tightening in here. That's your shoulder blades coming together, which is the proper setup for this exercise. All right, and then I'm just gonna reach out to the side like I'm spreading my wings. These are called T raises because your upper body is gonna look like a T. Little squeeze at the top. Think reach rather than lift. If your traps wanna do the work here, you have to make them not do the work. It's all about those little scapular muscles. That's why we're working with super light weights because otherwise those neck muscles will take over. You almost can't go too light with this. A couple more. And relax. So that's one set. You're going to do three sets total. So two more of each of those exercises at 10 reps apiece. Gonna keep it going fairly quick once again just to get that cardio work in there. We'll take a little breather now, get a little bit of water before we hit round two. Okay, once again with the split squats. I'll show you from a different angle this time just for uh, just for kicks here. Okay. So one foot forward, remember you're clamping down. You got the heel, you got the big toe, and you got the little toe, all clamping down there. Goblet style, so the weight's nice and tight to the chest. Core's nice and tight, but spine is neutral. Dipping down, driving through the heel. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, switching legs, exact same thing on this side, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, now let's roll right into that floor press that band floor press, or you could just be doing with dumbbells and just pressing the dumbbells up like that. It's all good. But I'm going to wrap that band around my back, tucked under the elbows there. I got my knees up, upper arms 45 degree angle to my torso, nice tight core, and then I'm just driving up to lock out. Two, three, just locking those elbows out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now right into those glute bridges. Got my weight here. You can do this without weight. That's totally fine. And if you don't have an elevated surface, you can even just do these flat on the floor with your back flat on the floor and your knees bent. Still works. It's all good. This just adds a little bit to it. That's all. All right. Doing one leg here. Bridging up. Little squeeze at the top. Two. Eyes down. No matter what variation you're doing, you're keeping those eyes down. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, switching legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And right into the T raises to complete this set. Once again, you're gonna bend over that sort of 90 degree bend there, shoulders back, thumbs out reach little squeeze at the top if you feel your neck getting activated you want to try to sense into those muscles lower down behind the scapula that's what you're focusing on slow it down if you got it remember those thumbs out that is going to help you can do this with nothing in your hands i just like to have a little something just to remind me that i am sort of lifting something Okay, a little breather. I'm just gonna do that one more time. And that's gonna be it for today. No finisher on day one. I will start to incorporate finishers as I go into the week here and things will get uh, a lot tougher. But sometimes it's nice your first day back after a break to uh, take it a little easier. 
and we're getting a decent amount of volume in too with these uh, unilateral movements. Okay, so let's hit those split squats one more time. Speaking of unilateral movements. All right, from here, dipping down with that knee, driving through that front foot, clamping down with the big toe and the little toe. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switching legs. Same deal on this side. Clamp down with that big toe, little toe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, last round on the floor press. You're going to bend it up or throw those dumbbells in your hand, whatever you got. Okay, knees bent, back ribs nice and snug against the ground, big bracing breath around that spine, keeping the core tight, 45 degrees. Excuse me, 45 degree angle with the upper arms and press. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one more time for our glute bridges here. Okay, ball in the lap. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switching legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're coming to the end now. This exercise here, even though I have been keeping the tempo up pretty quick, we don't want to rush this one. Think of it as a nice segue into your recovery. All right, so once again, we're going to bend over, core tight, shoulders back, thumbs out. Big breath. Slow this right down, reaching out, little squeeze at the top. Really sensing into those scapular muscles. All the little muscles that you hardly ever use. You do this a few dozen times, <laughs> you're gonna start feeling those. And maybe you've never felt them before. I kinda lost count, so I'm just gonna say three more. All right, those are your T-raises and that's it. Three sets of 10 each there. Like I said, no finisher today, but tune in tomorrow and there will be a, a nice little finisher tacked on to the end. If you are watching this live on Instagram, thanks very much for joining me. If you're checking this out on YouTube later, please like and subscribe for more. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, cool down, foam roll, stretch it out, get some protein. Take care.